Welcome to the OKD Working Group meeting for April 26 of 2022. And we have a pretty full agenda here. So we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, we'll start out with agenda review, take about 30 seconds to take a look at the agenda. Please put your name in the uh, attendees section so that we know that you were here and uh, we can sort of keep an eye on um, if we need to reach out to someone who wasn't able to make it. Uh, that maybe has tasks or maybe will be affected by some of the things that we talk about. So we'll um, get started uh, with uh, some release uh, updates. So Christian, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Uh, yeah, sure. So I wasn't actually involved in making the, this weekend's release. That was uh, Vadim doing his great work again. Uh, so, but I saw there's a new release out. So, um, yeah, everybody, please uh, test it and then get feedback back to us. Uh, regarding the question that came up, uh, that just came up earlier before the recording started uh, with regards to the etcd uh, uh, corruption issue, I am not actually sure this solves it. So, the question somebody brought to me was whether we could do another 4.9 release to fix the issue that is in the latest on the last 4.9 release uh, that we have. And we can't actually do that. Since we have this rolling release model, we are now at 4.10, so we can't go back and release another 4.9 version. Um, if the version of etcd that, it, that, we, that we released this weekend, though, is bigger than, I, and I forgot the, the specific version numbers here, but if it's uh, if it's bigger than than one of the affected versions, it should be safe to upgrade. But I am not sure whether that's actually the case. Um, so if there's anybody with more knowledge, um, I'd be very thankful for for them to chime in now. So this actually came up as a question in the channel, and I couldn't answer it directly off the top of my head. How can we check the etcd version either from the command line of the um, I guess we could log into a node and do etcd control, right, to get the version that's running. Is there a way to do it just by looking at um, the manifests or the containers or any aspect outside of an existing install? Does anyone know? It might be on the cluster operator resource. I, I don't know. I'm not set up to check right now, though. Okay. That's, I think, something we should figure out. That way we can, um, I think we should post something about this. The documents, uh, documentation subgroup can take this up. Um, we can post something about it and actually say, hey, if you want to know where you're at, um, these are the versions and you can always test yourself by looking here to see which version you're running. Because that email today, I mean, this has been out actually as an issue for, um, what, like three weeks now, I think, or almost a month. And like that email today, just everyone just went, Wah! it was like the don't panic scene from airplane. Well, isn't this blocking LCP 49 to 410 or something? Uh, I the Yes, it is. But if you do 28, I think it is, or whatever <clears throat> just came out, it, it uh, actually is the edge. So uh, take a look actually. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but yeah. So actually it is, the releases do open it up for that. I've just posted the um, that, I've just posted the knowledge base article um, in the chat. We can also put that in the the notes. But it's etcd three five zero to three five two are the affected versions. Yeah, and we're talking about data corruption and essentially um, not all of the members are getting the updates under heavy load. <clears throat> So yeah, I think the docs group should should take this up as something to um, let folks know about, uh, just because we're gonna. I'm sure we're gonna get questions about it um, moving forward. And Christian, anything else uh, you want to let us know about in terms of? Uh, uh, yeah, one one noteworthy thing is that we that the latest release now fixes or moves away from the cryo version that is affected by the 
CVE. I don't have the number right right now, but there was a cryo CVE, and unfortunately, we were stuck on that version uh, for a couple of weeks, as you know, and that is fixed in the new release. So if yeah, if, that is a good reason to upgrade definitely. And I think previous versions were also affected 4.9 possibly. Um, so definitely, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. That is now fixed in the newest release. Very cool. Now, in terms of overall process, you you were missing access. Is that right, Christian? You were missing access to something to cut a release. Is that resolved now? So, yeah, it's essentially, um, there's a few things. I wasn't able to mirror out the images because only Vadim has, or mir mirror out the images to Quay because only Vadim has access to that. That is fixable from our side, so, uh, though, so I can... I should probably just request that access. It wasn't given to me back in the day. Um, and then there's the the other issue that the whole build system is essentially owned by Vadim. So it, ha it runs kind of in his namespace using his, his secrets. Um, I can only say right now, there are going to be changes in, in the build system and we are going to pull that into Prowl. Uh, it, back when we set up the system, it wasn't possible to do those uh, RPM OS tree composers within Prowl. Um, that is entirely possible now, and we also have something we're investigating, which is the, the CoreOS layering effort, uh, where we would reuse an actual FCOS release and just layer our things on top, and um, thereby preserve um, the actual FCOS versions, because we, we've always had, had this um, package version mismatch, uh, mismatches uh, for all the packages, because we, we only pulled in the, the Fedora CoreOS manifests and then did a new compose, new, entirely <clears throat> new RPM OS tree compose for, for OKD. And with this new concept, we will be reusing an existing compose. And we, we, we can now do both things uh, within our CI, within Prowl, uh, completely new uh, composes and also these layer layered composes or just layering <clears throat> on top of an existing compose. And we're going now, to be changing towards that in the near term. Okay, so near term. Um, um, can you can three you to us nine a... weeks? Okay. <laughs> One to three sprints. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Christian in terms of uh, OKD uh, releases and? There were a couple of, of small but important fixes in this release. Um, one, there was a uh, kernel issue, so we had to actually pin the new kernel, uh, or pin a previous kernel. The new kernel was was uh, breaking on VMware. Um, and we've also hopefully permanently, until we have a real solution, fixed uh, KaiUA's issue with um, the search dot issue. Um, we put that into a spot where that will always get resolved um, properly. Uh, it was a timing issue before. Um, we had a five-second timer in there, and with 4.10, uh, it looked like it was acting between four and six seconds, so sometimes it would work, sometimes it won't. Well, we were able to take that sleep out and put it into a proper spot, so now it happens after networking is up, and it just does its thing. have not been able to make it break yet. Um, John, can you drop sure. that issue uh, in the meeting notes for folks that aren't sure what we're talking about? Basically, there's a, a DNS search issue because of the three different competing systems for name lookups uh, on FCOS or on Fedora. Um, and so there's things that get written to um, resolve uh and that needed to happen after other things and um so information was not found in terms of um external domains um yeah, yeah go ahead john um there is one uh outstanding thing that will be fixed probably with the next release we uh we found that there is an issue with the installer um and that will be uh the installer uh, with creating a bootstrap node and not being able to resolve API int. Um, that fixes in and will probably be in the next release. Um, it's already in the 4.10 and it's been approved and all that. Just missed it by a day for this one. 
And there is one still outstanding issue. Again, this is a Kaiwe's issue um, where the master uh, controllers don't seem to sync properly at the beginning. Um, that's, we don't know what's causing that. I mean, unless, unless Christian, you have an idea. I, I only have a time. time. So this is the, the MCO and the, the machine Correct. config that, that gets rendered, yeah. right? So yeah. the two, the two machine configs that aren't picked up some, sometimes are not picked up and not included in the, in the rendered, uh, machine configuration. Uh, those are exactly the two uh, machine configs we are adding in our custom OKD build process. Yep. So it, yeah, and I don't know why they sometimes get picked up and sometimes they don't. But yeah, it also seems like a timing issue. They seem to be created to at too late a stage where the MCO um, or the MCC has already begun, uh, which is the machine config controller has already begun rendering uh, that that configuration and, and therefore doesn't include those two. Um, yeah, not sure how, how we, yeah, I, I don't really know the way forward or what the fix would be. Maybe it just goes away with our new build system. I'm, I'm kind of hoping, <laughs> hoping that, but, um, yeah, that would be I, nice. I don't really know what causes it. It's, it's, it's definitely specific to our builds because it's, it only really, yeah, it only happens with our two. Um, right, but it's got to be it's got to be in the bootstrap process because this never happens on the worker side, and the worker side is identical. Right. Yeah, it, it has to be some kind of timing issue that we, yeah. we don't create them early enough or something. Mm -hmm. um, those resources. Yeah. So that'll be on somebody's list at some point to look at. Um, there yeah, is another. I looked at I, I did look at that issue again, and I wasn't sure there's no Bugzilla link to it. I think it would be a good idea to open a Bugzilla and um, put that on uh, on the machine config operator team. To uh, if, I know they, they've already been tagged on the GitHub issue, but if they have a Bugzilla, they really have something to to look at, and they have to okay. look at that. So that um, might be. I'll reach out to Kai if he way yeah, to yeah, yeah, if he can't do it, I'll do it. Um, and I, I haven't looked at it yet. Um, there is a, an issue that's going to hit us with 4.11 unless a fix comes, again, with the installer. Um, there's something, they've gone to a new, uh, a non forked version of, of some of the installer code, and that is causing issues with bootstrap modes being deleted. There's some issues in there, so um, that's out there also. And... I uh, about, just about that issue, um, a yeah, a, a colleague of mine um, on my team is looking yep. is looking at that uh, as we speak, and I, I think it will probably be fixed before 4.11 is released because yeah, that will also, also affect uh, affect um, OpenShift Compute yep. Platform the, the product. So that will that will probably go away. Yeah, he reached out to me earlier today, so I gave him some information. So hopefully that will but, but that's just a. Um, and the other thing, uh, and I know Bruce is interested in this, um, they may have a fix for the CFF, the CFFS stuff. Um, I guess they're testing it in development now, and hopefully they'll push it to stable. But what I don't know is how long it takes for that to get to um, FCOS. I hope it will. But they seem to have found what the issue is. Dusty can probably speak to that. Um, Let's let, I know Dusty came in um, sort of, uh, <clears throat> Dusty's on a limited uh, time schedule. So let's actually transition quickly to um, FCOS uh, updates and then bounce back to anything else just so that we can uh, let Dusty um, take care of other things. Dusty, any uh, FCOS updates? Hey, uh, I don't have anything in particular. We're getting pretty close to the Fedora 36 release. Um, so. At that point, our testing stream will get moved over to Fedora 36, uh, and then shortly after that, stable. Um, so, Christian, I don't know if we have any, like, advanced testing of, uh, like, next, but that would be useful if we find issues there to report those and see if we can figure them out um, early on. 
rather than you guys having to freeze. Yeah, we do have that one branch uh, that builds off of the the devel uh, fcos devel. So we'll we'll probably get a build from that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and just to mention, um, one of one of the changes there was IP tables moving to NF tables by default, which shouldn't be an issue because Red Hat Core OS or Rel eight made that change some time ago. Uh, and then there was um, what else was there? We have Podman 4.0 uh, in Fedora 36, which had some breaking changes to the Podman API. I don't remember if uh, OKD slash OCP still uses Podman for anything at all these days. I know early on there was some, you know, pulling from a registry type stuff that was happening, but I don't know if we do that anymore. But that's just something else to consider. I think it's still, Podman is still used as a fallback in case OC isn't there, but I'm, I'm not sure in, in which cases that would actually happen. Um, and I, I hope that API uh, has changed too much full images. Yeah, if, if, it's, uh, if it's just a scripted change, like uh, if it's executing Podman in a script, it should be fine. The only thing I think that really changed in a breaking way is if you're using the Podman API, so not the Docker API, which Podman also supports, but the Podman specific API, there were some breaking changes there. Yeah, as far as I know, we, we don't use that anywhere. Cool, yeah, the CLI itself should have no breaking changes if I understand correctly. Excellent, uh, any questions or comments for Dusty in regards to Fedora Core OS stuff? I guess this is to Christian and Dusty. Um, I mean, I know that we have the kernel pinned right now. Um, I know we don't want to keep that pinned. Uh, how do we go forward in, in testing new kernels to see if we can unpin this issue? So th there is a bugzilla for this, and we should definitely follow what what happens there. M maybe they'll patch the kernel in Fedora. Maybe, and I think there was already an upstream fix proposed. So maybe that gets backported um, by the kernel maintainers or even upstream. Um, so we'll, we'll just have to wait um, for now. I wonder if we wait till 11. 11 what? 4.11. Oh, so that might, oh that, sorry. That might, be, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that might be a few months out still. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe. Uh, we can if, if there's no cbes or other big things uh popping up in the meantime maybe we can do that yeah, yeah once there's a fix we'll fast track it in fedora core os but uh like it, it's not it's not currently pinned in fedora core os uh just because we didn't catch it before it hit stable um and because people are working on fixing it upstream we're not necessarily chasing the fedora kernel maintainer to revert that commit. Uh, so yeah. we're hoping that basically a fix comes in and we can just get it back ported. Yeah. Um, I can, as soon as it's ready, I can test it. I mean, because I, I was able to recreate it 100%. So that'll be perfect. Good. That's what's important reproducibility. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments for Dusty? All right. Thank you, Dusty, for your time. Appreciate you popping in to give us the latest. No problem. I might hang around for a minute, but you might Absolutely. see me drop off too. Okay. Um, so I wanted to bounce back to, um, speaking of Kai, he brought up uh, an issue with the registry in 4.9 pointing to, or uh, the catalog in 4.9, samples catalog, pointing to CentOS images that were, that they're, it's pointing to registry, Red Hat, um, registry.redhat.io instead of Quay or Key, as Brian would say. Um, so we know there aren't any 4.9 uh, updates coming out. Does anyone know if 4.10, if that properly points in the correct place? I haven't checked yet. Um, but Kai pointed out that the CentOS-based images, all of the CentOS-based images point to non-existent places in registry.redhat.io. If anyone has any insight on that? If not, I'll dig and take a look. 
Okay. All right. Um, man, we need to buy him a beer sometime or whatever the beverage of his choice is. That guy finds so many bugs, issues, like everything. It's pretty amazing. Brian, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Jenny, I was just going to ask, is that specifically in the samples? Because <clears throat> I know we have quite a few operators in the operator catalog it's, that are also in the same place. I think it's just in the samples. I'm pretty sure it's just okay. in the samples. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh, move on now to uh, actually Brian with uh, documents updates. Okay. So we had our meeting last week. A um, couple of things. So we're going to start planning to move to the new Git organization, the OKD project Git organization. Um, what we want to do is we want to plan it and do a single move so we're not left with people spanning multiple repos and we get all confused. So we're going to start that work. We've shut down the community repo already. We moved everything out of there. So that hopefully is gone now. We requested it be deleted. So we're now just the, sorry, Dan. I, I believe it was. Christian, I think, okay. put in the, um, the request for me. Okay, that's great. I, I put in the request to, to archive it, but I'm I'm not sure yeah. they've done it already. But yeah, it's it's in the in the works. Okay, so that's going to me leave the main OKD repo, and then obviously the OKD.io repo that will move across to the new home at some point. Um, we'll keep you updated as we sort of make that plan and when we're going to do that move. Um, we are working on the technical documentation. So we want to add a new section to okd.io, which is covering technical documentation. In the tasks, um, I did put a link to um, the discussion forum. So we had this conversation last meeting. If you have any best practices, tips, if you know of any sort of obscure places within the must gather logs where it's useful to go check um, any little sort of magic scripts that you've got to help work out when things go wrong. If you can just dump them in that discussion thread, I again the links in the in the in the tasks at the bottom of the of this meeting. Um and then the docs groups, um probably me will render that into something worthwhile on the OKD site. Um, also I'm still working through a a work sample of how to compile modules. Um, John gave me some very useful information. So I'm, I'm working through that. We'll write that up and we'll also get that pushed there. Um, at some point, Christian, as we sort of move the build, we do want to sort of write up some things like the, ma the machine config operator and some of the other sort of bits of magic that form up a release just to help the community understand how it all works and um, when they're looking at the repos, um, help them do that. So that is sort of a long-term project to actually get some technical documentation there and hopefully keep it updated as, as the project moves on. Um, regarding OKD.io, we're going to reorganize the working group site. Um, we're going to make the, this main group um, more prominent, and we're going to rename all the subgroups as subgroups. Um, and they're going to be in a separate section as subgroups, just so it's very clear that this is the primary group, and then there are subgroups um, underneath. So we'll just, just be tidying that out. Um, dum, 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 dum. And I'm going to pass it on to Jamie to talk about the subchairs, because we need oh. to do one thing to get our um, become in line with what we put in our sort of um, code of conduct. Right, so uh, in terms of the um, subgroup chairs, uh, I wanted to be able to make it a public, like, hey, the OKD working group is doing this, and I wanted to be able to have post something on Twitter that says the OKD working group is doing this. Uh, it turns out I don't have everything I need to get into the Twitter, so I'm gonna work with Diane on that uh, tomorrow. It turns out I need an email address for verification. So, uh, but once we're able to communicate out that we are actually having 
a process of defining chairs, um, then we'll move forward with that. It hasn't been a big rush until now. I didn't want to rush it because I, what I want to do is make sure that we let the community know that we are a, as much as possible, open and, and democratic-ish community and let people know that, that their participation is appreciated and that there's a path for them to get involved. And this factors into the larger discussion of like outlining a path for involvement, um, which we've talked about before. So once the Twitter stuff is cleared away and, it, and we can actively like promote that we're following this process, um, then, and that'll be in the next couple of days, then we will actually do that. Um, and the other thing is I'm still behind in posting videos. It, uh, I have two more to do, uh, and then I'll be, but then there's this video today. Um, I just, I needed to um, get more hard drive space because right now we are at um, dozens and dozens of gigabytes of meeting videos, which is fantastic, but I'm getting my own storage actually uh, for this. Um, and so then the meeting, the meeting videos will be up and also the meeting minutes have started to get posted to the OKD IO site and the link to the minutes will start getting included into the video description. So people can actually go into the video description, watch and go to the meeting minutes as well. Okay, that's passing back to Brian now. Anything else for docs? No, I think that was it. Um, um, do, 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 do. Oh, yes, there was a, still a call for request for anybody that wants to go and love CLC. We are still looking for somebody to go love that project and create the updates. Yeah. Um, yes, and I think it might be something that we look at to see if we can get um, a, a copy. A, oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm trying to find the raise your hand button, but I can't find it on my screen. Um, I'm, I'm trying, there's a group inside of Red Hat, I think I mentioned this on the docs call, called Operate First, and they have a cloud called, I think it's based on Mass Open Cloud, it's in Massachusetts somewhere, and they have some cloud computing resource and some bandwidth, and they like building CI, CD stuff. So I've asked them and shared with them Charo's um, build um, upstream without a paddle um, blog posts and asked them to take a look at trying to recreate that on Operate First. And so I'm going to try and get them to come to the working group and talk about their adventures there. Um, but what my goal is, is kind of using this as a POC with this group to see if we can do if we can get a community build process for CRC on this cloud um, that we can help manage and and automate and that. Um, I, I was hesitating at first because it's at Boston University, thanks, Mike, um, that, that um, I was hesitating at first because I didn't think there was that much uptake on, on CRC. I didn't want to spend bandwidth on that, but I've been told that there are people actually using it and who want it. So um, we'll see, we'll use that. And then maybe if it all goes well, we might even be able to build a community build process for um, OKD on that cloud too um, of some ilk. So I, I'm just, just so I'm being transparent about what I'm doing in the background here, I'm trying to find some additional resources and the compute resources to do the CRC and to do a community build of OKD on FCOS sometime in the not too distant future if that works out. I'm not positive that the OK, the Operate First Cloud is optimal for building it, um, but I thought the CRC would be a first good test. So um, there's your quick update and uh, I will now go back and hunt them down and see if they got any, any, any further than I in the past week since I last talked to them. Fantastic. Thank you, Diane. What does this group think about um, tasking the documentation subgroup with maybe moving Charo's document into the OKD space so that it's actually an OKD document and we can build and update it without rely, having to rely on Charo? Charo's incredibly busy these days, and I, I think the more that we can 
make it institutional knowledge versus um, an individual's knowledge that would benefit. Does anyone see any downsides to that? As long as, long as Charo is happy that we, we take his content and move it. Yeah. Pilfer from him, sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, so I that's that chat, but I'll say it again, like ma the maintenance of that. I think if we bring it into OKD, we should build the notion of like someone like trying it and if it fails, updating it. Because like just bringing Charo stuff in and letting it bit rot under the OKD title is probably not, not nearly as cool as letting it bit rot under Charo's title. Yeah, yeah one of the things that I talked about um, as we were going through um, the guides um, and those folks aren't here today, but the folks that are going through and helping get the, the, um, the guides updated the idea was, I, I suggested the idea of let's create a calendar that every year cycles through our documentation or every quarter, however often we can do it, cycles through our documentation and we assign someone or someone volunteers to look at that document and verify its updatedness, you know, um, its, its freshness and verify that it's not stale. Um, and that we do that on a regular process. So a lot of groups I'm involved with will do that with their policies, their guidelines or whatever. I think we could do that with our documentation is just create a calendar um, and get volunteers, right? And if we, yeah, Brian. Yeah, I was thinking, another part of that is um, a few meetings ago, we talked about automation. Mm -hmm. If we can automate a lot of the processes that are within our documentation, then we get kicked by a failure notice if our documentation is out of date. I think that's also a very useful way of, of, of keeping documentation up to date and just make sure that we link the, if you fix the build, you got to fix the documentation. Right. Um, so the two stay in sync. I, I think that's also um, sort of reviving your project. I, I know that you, you gave us the link to some scripts yeah. that you'd written, Jeremy. Just reviving that project and actually try and automate as much of the the instructions that we put on OKDIO, so we know when it's our date. Yeah. All right, uh, I think that's it for documentation. Let's keep moving on. Um, so uh, discussion items, Are there is there anything in the discussion of the repo, discussion section of the repo that folks wanna pull out um, and talk about or think needs special uh, attention? I didn't notice anything. I don't think that. Uh, um, so there's one other about the, uh, the uh, upgrading to 410, the new warnings. Um, those are there on purpose. Uh, those were specifically added uh, in 410. Um, to let people right. know that future API stuff is coming out and they got to get off of it before they upgrade at a certain point. Wasn't right. And I specifically for, it was like, internal resources that were that were being flagged and he was wondering if there's anything you should do to fix those i don't think it was any anything that any like user workloads in which case yeah, I, think, I think we just have to hope that upstream gets to them which they will i'm sure yeah i'm sure they will i think we like one of the things i listed in this is like does it make sense uh in the meeting notes uh, one of the things I put in the meeting notes is, does it make sense to kick this to the documentation working group for us to come up with our own little explanation of this and maybe help folks understand what is an internal workload and what is an external workload? Because the Red Hat documentation itself doesn't do a very good job. I know folks are running the command and not really clear. Right? It's not clear what they're looking at, right? And so I've seen several comments that are like, yeah, I got the warning messages. I ran the, what is it, MCP or whatever and um, I don't know what I'm looking at. Does it make mm -hmm. sense for OKD to write something up that sort of helps our users sort of understand what they're looking at? I, I mean, it might take someone 20 I mean, minutes if we, to write. If we, can, if we can make the documentation a little bit more clear for somebody, I mean, I, I, you know, kind of a, you know, in the FAQ, sure. <clears throat> Christian, you've got uh, your hand raised. Yeah, I found the button uh, somewhere in the menu. Um, it for we do actually because it's a separate build for the okd docs we can actually put some of those comments we, we don't need to put them on our okd io specific docs we can actually put them in the main docs and just 
put them in like uh, this if statement that says this only display this for right. for OKD. Um, there, there's actually we have um, this one docs person uh, from Red Hat, Michael Berg, who has been helping a lot with with our issues, and um, he's now I think planning another PR to add a list for uh, the OpenStack variant that uh, just uh, yeah, essentially the compatibility matrix, um, because in, in current 4.10, we only, I, I believe, support open, or is that Red Hat OpenStack 16, which is OpenStack train upstream, and he'll he'll put that uh, that list uh, for, for the upstream version names uh, in there too. So I think we, we can actually uh, use that more heavily um, and just, put OKD specific comments in the actual docs. And then- And Michael later, shows up to our work, our documentation subgroup meeting every day. Ah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. we can definitely kick that um, there if if folks feel that that's the appropriate place versus something on the site. Would it be possible? You know, so the I, question I, is, oh, sorry, go ahead, Christian. Oh no, maybe repeat the question so I don't talk and talk here. Well, you know, the, the question might be is, are there any downsides to putting it into the product document work. So Christian, in the in the documentation working group, we separated into product documentation versus sort of community documentation. Are there any downsides that anyone can think of of putting it in the product documentation versus the community documentation? I don't want to belabor this, but I'm just curious if anyone sees anything. I, I think if you have like specific workarounds or commands for for things, you you might have to do in that uh, in in that instance. Um, we have these things as kind of warnings or notes on the on the product docs, and if there's something you need to do specifically for for Fedora, um, in that case, I, I think it would be perfectly fine to put them in the docs as well. And then later on, when that version of of whatever software you have to use uh, comes into the product, people can just move that that note. So I think it's uh, yeah, and obviously it'll get reviewed by the product folks uh, or the you know, the, the docs folks that maintain that repository. So um, trying to move as much uh, valuable information into the docs, I think is uh, is a good thing. And since we can just uh, kind of exclude them from the product docs by by putting the, uh, them into the uh, the if statement, um, I think, yeah, we should try to, to use that as heavily as possible for, for con concise, obvious, obviously concise uh, notes and tips and, and warnings and whatnot. Um, if yeah, if you Excellent. think it's a good place, I think you should try to put them in. All right. Any other thoughts on this particular topic, folks? All right. Um, any other discussion items worth mentioning here? I don't see anything here in the past couple weeks that stands out. All right, uh, moving on to issues. What are the, we've we talked about most of the issues earlier on, but are there any other issues in the issues section that we should bring uh, to folks' attention? Oh, what is it? What's the? I've seen a couple of these float by about. Um, FCOS and RCOS getting mixed up in the installer for bare metal. Does anyone know about that and what what's happening there? We re did receive an issue about that. Uh, and someone mentioned in the channel uh, about this, but I, I don't know anything about it. Has anyone seen this where a bare metal OKD install pulls up RCOS nodes? That just seems weird. Yeah. Did somebody forget to change something? I'm not quite sure how that would happen because the installer only has FCOS images in it. Um, but it's bare metal, so. I mean, I imagine it's a bare metal IPI? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I... I'm at a loss, but they were asking in the channel, and, and I think it's mm -hmm. the same person, but I can't be sure. Yeah. Because um, they have, I think, slightly different. Hi. But... That's me, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't really know what's happening other than I extracted the bare metal IPI installer from the OKD release, the, the previous one, not the really recent one. And yeah, uh, then... Oh, 
I know you what have this an idea. probably is. Hey, Christian, are you still on? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there. So you know that other PR that I have out there about making the uh, the installer artifacts? Yes, I, I think I remember. So when it, when we're building the installer artifact, which is maybe the, where this is coming from, <clears throat> um, the OKD tag doesn't get propagated down. So maybe, well, no, but that's only for that's only for. Uh, that doesn't make sense. That because that's I, I, like I, I think it, I think it system. might make I, I think it might make sense though because I think we do use different containers for the different mm -hmm. uh, release artifacts and you're trying to uh, to pull the OpenShift bare metal install uh, binary specifically and not, it's uh, it's a command that like this I've actually never used it myself I've only just you know pulled the OpenShift installer from it. But not bare metal install, and I think you might be right that we aren't actually propagating the OKD environment tag mm -hmm. environment uh, variable into the other artifacts build containers mm -hmm. and just the main one. Um, and I think that is the issue. You, yeah, it, changing it in the Docker file might actually be might actually be uh, sufficient here, which is the PR you you opened. Yeah. Right, right. Although, if, if you could link that, that real quick, that would be helpful. Yeah, if you could put that into the meeting notes, that would be great. And uh, is it Eric? Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, this is very helpful to know. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the the bootstrap node that gets uh, set up as a virtual machine on the provisioner thing that installs with Fedora CoreOS, but the Fedora CoreOS Whenever my machines pixie boot, they're getting served Red Hat Core OS. Also, oh. yeah, since I have you here, uh, <laughs> do you know how I can uh, modify the, uh, like send something in that would allow me to get serial output while I'm installing the uh, bare metal nodes? No. <laughs> that that, that a, would a be a good question for Dusty, and I think you you might uh, want to pass uh, a kernel argument. Um, yeah, a, a kernel I argument. Do that, but I don't know how to get that from my, uh, the manif. If I can do it via the manifests, or how that gets passed into the ironic, or however the the provisioning right, so actually would, happens. Yeah, that would be, you could do it with a with a KARG probably passed in <clears throat> for UPI, for IPI, I don't know. Tell you what, we will look it up and find out and we'll put it. Um, did you open a discussion item on this one on the site or did you just mention it? In the, I, I saw your question in the channel, but um, can you open up a discussion item on the um, OKD repo? And if you put yeah. that discussion item there, we'll respond to you with a response. We'll reach out to Dusty um, and also find out um, if this is something that that's um, doable for IPI or probably just UPI, but we'll check and see. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, for what it's worth, on an IPI install, you can also break out the manifests and modify stuff. So if it is a matter of doing it from the manifests, there's probably a way you can do it with IPI, you know, if you need to. Okay, okay, cool. All right. And, and if it's not in the manifest already, you can do it via ignition and it should at least for the second boot, um, or for right. the boot into the actual real root, uh, then have that uh, kernel arc applied. Right. Which, which still is yeah. a bit special in, in OKD because we first boot a standard Fedora core OS and then we pivot into our machine OS. So, um, yeah, you, your experience may vary here, um, I think, but we'll definitely find that out. I think that's uh, interesting. Good thing. I mean, Christian, it sounds like this would just be a custom machine config, right? That that did something different with the kernel args. Yeah, you can you can specify it through machine uh, config, but that actually isn't that's not a pure ignition uh, the MCO currently consumes. It's an MCO API, so the MC the the machine config operator will consume that, and then the MCD 
will apply it and reboot the machine. So you don't get it from the from the get go like you would with natively. Right, right. Okay. There is there is a Jira card for actually making use of the native ignition API to have that come up right away with the kernel arc applied. Uh, but it's not currently the case. <laughs> Slightly more complicated than we expect. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I put that poll in the chat. I'm not sure where you wanted it in the documentation, so or in the minutes. Okay. <clears throat> and nothing's happened with it in quite a while, so. Okay, let's uh, hold but, on uh, a second here. All right, I'll just pop that there. Uh, all right, well, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. And um, we will uh, do our best to get these addressed and get the information to you. Um, uh, post haste, uh, and thanks for your patience uh, while we figure this out. We brought two very good things to our attention, so much appreciated. And thanks for coming to the meeting too. It's nice to have uh, some folks showing up here that isn't the usual crowd. Uh, all right, moving on to um, the survey. Uh, so I did uh, have a chat discussion with Driti um, night before last. Um, she has had other things going on and is going to send me a copy of the survey. For folks who don't remember, this was something we started working on last fall, but um, uh, uh, things got sidetracked. Um, and so we're going to get a copy of that survey, revamp it, and then send it out to our users um, to get a sense of uh, what they're doing and how they're using OKD and how they'd like us uh, um, to, um, what they might look for in OKD in the future. and how the community can grow and change uh, to meet their needs as a community, open source community. Um, any questions or comments on that? Any feedback on that? All right, uh, we did the project updates. Uh, we're pretty close to the end. Um, if folks could add task items in there so that we remember our, all of our tasks, that would be helpful. Um, I'll try to put in a couple too, but. Um, if folks could put in task items, that'll help us um, remember all the things that we said that we were going to do here. And I was just, just yeah. going to double check with Christian. Uh, Christian, I have both you and Vadim down for the KubeCon gathering, giving an update. Is, is Vadim still coming or is it just going to be you? I think Vadim is going to be there, yeah. Okay, cool. Then we can take him to dinner. And oh, yeah, absolutely. And send them to a spa. <laughs> and and Brian Innes, um, I will I, I do still owe you the, the D Dublin and the London dates for those. And if anybody else is in the UK area, we have two I think July sixth and June twenty something two gatherings there that I'm looking for OKD um, collaborators with Brian to give the community update, otherwise it's going to be me doing the song and dance with Brian. So, by the way, I, uh, I'm looking at that installer, uh, a, a quick segue since we're running out of time. Um, that is a that is an FCOS installer. I don't see anything in it that references RHEL or ARCA or HCOS, whatever. Everything yeah. in there is, is all uh, Fedora, FCOS. Uh, well, let's give this a shot. If someone else can um, can can test this, and maybe we can get a couple folks testing it, and then narrow this down, um, that would be awesome. So we need some bare metal testing. I might be able to to throw it on a machine and test. But if anyone else can, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I don't have any way of doing bare metal at this point. No, somebody buy um, computers. I'll do bare metal. On the other side of this. I'll try to give a review on that installer PR, John. Um, just for what it's worth, our, the installer team has been under like a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. We know that they have, they have not necessarily had a lot of spare cycles just to look oh, yeah. at pull requests. But I'll try. Oh, yeah, I'll try I, mean, yeah I mean, it was a minor one for me. I, I was like, eh. you know, I just happened to notice that because I was going through learning how to do the build, and I happened to see that um, it wasn't passing the tags through because um, I didn't know how to build a, an OKD installer. You know, until Vadim put that information out. So just happened to notice that that wasn't being passed down. So <clears throat> not a huge deal. Yeah, totally. You got the important ones out. Right, right. I just want to try and give a little, I mean, like, mm -hmm. obviously you can't talk too much about it, but like just 
try to be a little transparent about like some of the statuses of our mm -hmm. teams. Sure. Excellent. All right. We've got a few minutes left. Is there anything else uh, that the folks would like us to talk about, um, take a look at, or anything else uh, before we sign off? It's an excellent meeting. All right. Well, cool. It's nice well, to have a lot of good positives going for this meeting because <laughs> the last couple of years we've had issues with the releases and everything. So there's a lot of yeah. A lot of, like oh today was today was good we had a lot of good things going forward yeah a lot of and i think we're a, a large in part i think due to brian's documentation work john your work um and christian's work and everyone shipping in we're starting to understand the nature of the beast better i think we're actually like understanding okd and what's underneath this um in terms of the build process in terms of the installer etc and i think that that's fundamental so, well, testing too. I, I mean, um, yeah. looking at looking at the prior results and, and digging into when they do the tests and seeing, you know, what in the world you know is prior doing and the results that they're getting. Digging into that is almost as bad as digging into a, a log into a, a log bundle. <laughs> but <laughs> do it a few times, it gets easier to find out where that you know. Okay, this broken prow because of this. Oh, this is a known issue. We can ignore it, or this is a new issue. Let's uh, you know, let's investigate it more. Right. Uh, we should do a, a deep dive into the prowl artifact. Ooh. Um, uh, sometime. And okay. I, I do hope that with the with the change in build system uh, that we'll we'll soon have uh, with pulling it into prowl natively, not shelling it out to Cirrus CI. Um, this will be especially the compose or, or layering process will be even easier to. Uh, to follow and debug and uh, just take a look at in, in the easiest sense because yeah right now well and generally following those logs is and debugging them is is a hard task and takes a lot of time christian who do you think is the best person if we were to have like a uh like a session a meeting d dedicated just to exploring prowl who would be the the best person to lead that I, I think we have uh, any any of the Red Hat employees here have have knowledge of most of them. I would, I would say <laughs> that system, and they would bring a piece to to that uh, meeting and uh, okay. the experience. You, you look at different things for different components, obviously. And I, I don't want to like pull in a member from from the test platform team uh, right now who isn't here who could probably explain it best, um, but. Yeah, because they they are they also have a lot of things to do. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll put it on your shoulders. There, there is a there is a they actually have great documentation about the system, and I think it's uh, docs.ci.openshift.org, and uh, I haven't checked it right now, but yeah, that should be it. And uh, that is actually okay. yeah, the canonical documentation for that system, and it's very helpful. I think instead of you know, instead of trying to like look at the prowl system and understand it like in abstract through like one presentation or a series of presentations, more likely, I would say it's probably if we could come up with with tasks that we could do like a deep dive around, that might be the most beneficial. Like, so take something John just said, you know, if we took the notion of like, I'm a community member and I'm putting a PR up and this is what I see happen, right. how do I then investigate what are these tests that failed? Which ones do I need to pay attention to? How do I find out where it failed? How do I debug it? You know, maybe if we focused on it like that, we could probably easily record like an hour session where someone kind of leads it from the perspective of like, I've just put up a PR and here's what happens next. I like it, give it context. Yeah, for sure. Right, well, and Christian good. would be great at like showing how to do all that stuff too. Oh well, yeah, in their time. Let's Christian and I, I can talk to some of the powers that be too and see if we can find someone between Christian and I, um, as opposed to um, just putting on Christian's shoulders. So let me see what we can do with maybe we talk to Michelle Creaky and others, um, and can find some folks to help because I think training up the community on this is a huge benefit. Um, so let me see what I've, I've got a couple calls coming up. I'll see if I can coerce them with some coaching to find somebody for us. Excellent. Thank you, Diane.
All right, folks, I'm going to hit uh, stop on the recording and thank you very much for attending the meeting. Thank you, Eric, and all of the other guests that contributed as well. And so next week at the same time uh, is the documentation <laughs> subgroup uh, meeting. And then this meeting happens again in two weeks. All right. Thanks, folks. <laughs>